This recently released game's already packed with some of the coolest characters from the Warner Brothers universe, and from what we've heard, a host of new playable characters will join the first season. You definitely won't be bored with the full battles you'll be fighting your way through. In this video, we'll talk about how we'll get to see some fan favorites in the game. First off, Stripe and Black Adam. Black Adam will join other DC heroes like Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, and Harley Quinn in the multiverses. Stripe from Gremlins will also be joining the cast which should be exciting news if you're a fan of the creature-centered movie series like we are. Currently, there are 17 characters in Multiversus that can be unlocked by playing the game and using in-game money. They can also be bought in the Multiversus marketplace with premium currency. A little birdie told us the developers have got plans to add several other characters later. Data mining suggests that big names like Harry Potter could appear in the Multiverse at some point in the future. And boy, are we excited to see a crossover that wild. Second, what about other characters in the game. If you haven't played it already, now would be as great a time to start as any, because from what we've heard, it's packed with the most interesting characters. We just knew from the patch notes that the character rotation will be insane. Plus, they've got some bug fixes on the way in case you had any lagging issues. You'll be able to play Batman, LeBron James, or even Arya Stark without paying. And Morty Smith will be joining soon, too, with a good old Plumbus. Arya's the best character to choose because the new and improved game gives her more angled hits stronger ground down attacks, and even better dodge branching. The notes already let us know that the developers were planning on making her combo attacks even better. And it doesn't matter if you're at a lower skill level because the brains behind the game have made sure you can use these benefits even then. And it looks like these characters got an upgrade too. Arya's not the only one to get an upgrade. You'll now have access to even better attacks for a combo even with LeBron. Plus you'll get a more driven ground side attack. But it looks like the Iron Giant's gone through the ringer because because his air up and air neutral attack just won't hold up against any enemy. They'll only make it easier for them to recover and hit back. It looks like these changes aren't just about the characters. The entire game is going through a major transformation, with Battle Pass XP match rewards increasing dramatically to 10 for winning and 5 when you lose. Plus, class specific missions are now disabled. And if you're like us and dying to see which playable characters are accessible without paying, it'll also be easier now to identify which characters are in free rotation with icons. Also, what's the timeline for this game? The game's first season started on August 15th and will end on November 15th. The release date was first pushed back. The season was supposed to come out on August 9th, but that didn't happen. But the delay wasn't too bad, and now that it's out, who cares? At the same time that the delay was announced, the official Twitter account for Multiverses said that the preseason pass would be extended from August 8th to August 15th, and this clue turned out to be right. Finally, what else do we know about the crossover fighting game. During EVO 2022, Player First Games told us more about Season 1. It was confirmed that we'd get new modes this season. An image posted on the official Multiverse channel showed some of the content coming to Season 1, such as a classic arcade mode and a ranked mode. Ranked should work as it does in other games like it, and it's a fun addition to the game. Not much is known about how the arcade mode will work yet, but leaks suggest that it'll be a single-player mode where players can fight against the computer. We'll have to wait and see how it works since the creators of Multiverses said both modes will come later in Season 1. The Battle Pass comes with many cosmetic items, such as stickers and different skins, as well as other nice things, such as new taunts and voice lines. But it doesn't give you any Gleemium, which is the premium currency. That's a shame, and it's likely to make some players mad. Tom and Jerry are one of the game's most unique aspects, but they're apparently also more difficult to learn. Smash Ultimate Pro CLG Void's recent doubles win win at Evolution 2022 brought Tom and Jerry to the attention of Multiverse's players. Now, these characters have always been very strong, even in the closed alphas of this platform brawler. But it looks like people are just now starting to figure out how strong they are and use them to their advantage. And to be fair, the cat and mouse pair has a very complicated way of playing, so it takes some time to learn how to play them and even more time to keep them alive. And here's some other related news you might have missed out on. First up, what's the future of Warner Brothers games? Games. The company isn't in the best place when it comes to how things have been going lately. With Bad Girl getting cancelled, it's clear that things are a mess, to say the least. Like, come on! This film was a $90 million project with Michael Keaton, but it got removed because of a tax write-down? The merger with Discovery clearly isn't working out in their favor, because even some HBO Max projects are about to go to SHIT. So that got us thinking, what does this mean for their games? Let's be real, this company's pretty well known for its games. They've got 
about Hogwarts Legacy, Gotham Knights, and Suicide Squad, Kill the Justice League coming up next year. Plus, of course, Multiverses instantly became a huge hit. And surprisingly, someone on Reddit's already confirmed this with exclusive information from the company. Looks like the games will be left alone because it's a pretty profitable division and the new owners are impressed with how well it's working out. This definitely kills off any rumors that they were planning on selling the whole gaming division to some other big company. Safe to say, we were relieved to hear this news. Like, imagine not getting more multiverses. What a tragedy. Looks like even Discovery's interested in promoting DC games. If there's one thing they recognize, it's that superhero games are a pretty profitable industry, and we can't blame them either. Second, Hogwarts Legacy was pushed to 2023. We were all looking forward to getting Hogwarts Legacy this year, but we'll have to wait a little longer before we get our letter. You know, being muggle-born and all. The RPG was supposed to come out this year, but the company said they're still working on improving it. On top of that, Rowling definitely didn't help their case since she's been, uh, more than a little loud about her problematic opinions on Twitter. But it looks like the WBIE is doing its best to keep a neutral stance on the issue and avoid getting involved in the drama. In an interview, David Haddad said that Rowling might be a creator of the characters that they use in the games for Port Key, but they can't really control what she does in her private life. They basically said that Rowling's opinions are her own, even if they might disagree with them. Well, it looks like they aren't willing to really get involved as long as they can keep making Harry Potter games. Oh well. Finally, you can't really compare multiverses to Smash Brothers. Yes, the game took off like crazy as soon as it was released, but it's not really fair to pit it against Smash Brothers. In the game, characters from many different Warner Brothers games fight each other, and you guessed it, that's a style made popular by Super Smash Brothers. Some of us are hoping that this game will keep its popularity and beat Smash Brothers as the best crossover game. That's because Nickelodeon All-Stars Brawl fell out of favor quickly after its release last year. This way of comparing games has been around for a long time. In the late 2000s and early 2010s, many new MMORPGs were called World of Warcraft Killers, and any multiplayer FPS was called a Call of Duty Killer. Even though it can be fun to talk about, making comparisons hurts more than they help. The main problem with judging the success of a game like Multiversus by whether or not it can beat Smash Brothers is that it turns the fluid and complex idea of success into something much simpler but harder to achieve. If Multiversus can't beat Smash Brothers as the best crossover fighter, then it hasn't succeeded, no matter how popular the game is on its own. If the game can't keep its current position in the future, many people might say it's a failure, even if the numbers keep coming in better than most. But for now, we can all agree that Multiversus is an absolute hit. That's a wrap for this video. What are you most looking forward to seeing in the new game? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.